Okay, let's talk about this contract that the Heat just agreed to with Tyler Hero, which is $130 million over four years. At the time of me doing this, I haven't seen if there's any incentives. It could be kind of like the R.J. Barrett contract, where it's technically more so like 120 or possibly like 115 with incentives based in there. But uh, look, the initial response, just going down the Twitter replies on Woj's tweet, it was a whole lot of overpay and that sort of thing. And uh, look, Tyler Hero, he's an interesting player. I mean, regular season-wise, he gets buckets. There's no doubt about that. In the playoffs, when he is going up against more physical defenders who can hone in on him more, and when he comes around a screen, there's not as much daylight because maybe, you know, the initial defender did a better job fighting around the screen, or they're just kind of bigger than him in general, or the big is playing a little higher up, or the help defense is a little faster, you know. Can he still produce under those circumstances? The other thing as well is he does have a pretty daring shot selection. He loves pull-ups, he loves contested jumpers, step backs, and when these are going in, it's great. When they're not going in, it's frustrating. With all that said, he had a strained groin against the Celtics where he did miss games and clearly wasn't the same guy. If that doesn't happen, is he dropping 20 points a game and killing them with pull-up jumpers, whereas some of the other Heat players were struggling There was one game in there specifically where they just couldn't score at all against the Celtics' drop defense. Well, that's the hope, if you're Miami. I think there also needs to be a conversation now of, should he go into the starting lineup? I mean, it's kind of awkward if if you're paying a guy over $30 or if it starts out at late 20s, whatever, goes to mid-30s by the end of the deal. If you're paying that guy that much money and he's coming off the bench, even if he is getting buckets for you, it might be a little awkward. Uh, Of course, Pat Riley already had that quote in the offseason of, Basically, you want to be a starter, you have to earn it, that sort of thing. The other thing, too, with this contract, I think you can include the RJ contract in this and whatever other extensions we're going to see over the next few years, the cap's going up. I mean, this year it's at 123. Next year it's projected to go to 134. In 2025, it's projected to go to 140. I mean, that's a $17 million jump in two seasons. Well, potentially at least. It's not a guarantee just yet, but those are the projections. And so when you look at it, less so about the actual number and more so about the percentage of the cap that it takes up, it doesn't get as crazy as you might have initially thought when you saw the Woj tweet about it, you know? With that being said, it's still a lot of money for Tyler Hero. (laughs) There's no doubt about that. And now between Jimmy, Bam, and Hero, they're pretty damn locked in. I mean, Jimmy's making nearly $50 in 2025. He is making over $50 in 2026. Bam is making over $30 million a year for the next four seasons, and now you got this hero deal. So that is a good amount of your salary over the next four to five years, whatever it is. And, and yet again, the cap's going up. So now I guess we look at Bam and hero, and I mean, it's been talked about enough with Bam, and I've reiterated it. He's just got to be a better scorer. And not even necessarily that he doesn't have the skills for it, it's that he's got to have the mindset for it. And I'm just going to keep bringing up that game where he looked like Hakeem against Horford in the post at the beginning of that game, whatever game it was in that series. Just need more of that from Bam. I think he's got it in him. I mean, he did get to 19 points a game in the regular season last year for what it's worth. Defensively, of course, he's one of the best in the league, and he's also one of the best passing bigs. But I also want to say this, because I feel like it's been taken for granted a little bit that Bam and Hero are here with the Heat and everything. And look, man, they drafted Bam with the 14th pick in 2017. They drafted Hero with the 13th pick in 2019. You know how many teams would love to have two guys that are as good as these guys in back-to-back drafts that they picked outside of the top 10. Like, that's not a normal thing to land both of those. Looking at the rest of the heats for a second, so Kyle Lowry has two years left on his deal, and it was a bit of a rough postseason for him. I believe it was a hamstring injury, if I remember correctly. The positive way you can look at that is that won't happen again. The negative way is he's uh, 36 years old. Of course, Miami is still going to be really good at development and picking diamonds out of the rough, you know, guys where it didn't totally work out in the previous team, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin. And I would imagine they're decently excited about Nikola Jovic, who is 6'10", but has like some like guard skills. Like he could break down guys off the dribble and stuff. And I would bank on Miami definitely being able to develop him. And as for their draft picks, I mean, they're most likely not going to have their pick in 2025. And after that, it clears up. So they're not in a horrible position to maneuver here. Although I do think Kyle Lowry holding up would really make things easier for him. Uh, And then there is still the Duncan Robinson contract. And I mean, we'll see. Like, could I picture them looking to move him? I mean, maybe, but I think they'd only do it if they were getting somebody good back. But then they'd have to include probably a pick in there, possibly two, depending on how good the player was. 
which to be fair, I think they would do. I mean, we've seen Miami when it's time to be aggressive on moves, they've done it. I mean, I remember they moved, what, two firsts to get Dragic back in the day. So for what all that means, I don't know. But a uh, shout out to Tyler Hero.